What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be doing a five things we learned from that West Coast Eagles game, and then we won't talk about it ever again. So let's just run that intro, jump straight into it. So before we do jump straight into it, uh, big announcement. We have a sponsor for this episode, and the sponsor is my Twitch and Instagram, which you should go over and follow at Swoop Luke. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Posting heaps of content, and I will be streaming this weekend. Promise. Anyway, let's jump into these things that we learned from the game against the West Coast Eagles. So it became evident. Uh, that one of the main things to take from this game is that we are a fast starting team, which is amazing. It is great to be fast starting, come out the blocks, put on a big lead, put on a bit of a buffer against the uh, other team going into the second and third and fourth quarter, obviously. Um, great. But that's all we do. <laughs> it's like going up on a roller coaster and you're going, yeah, 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 we're going to be good. Oh my God, look, look how high we're going. This is amazing. And then we just drop off. That's just how our season has been going, and it's absolutely goddamn ridiculous. So I was reading a report in uh, the Herald Sun today, and they were saying that 40% of our scoring for the entire games have come in the first quarter. We averaged 24 points uh, in the first quarter against, obviously, opposition, which ranks us number one in the competition in first quarters. Uh, and it gives us uh, like a percentage boost if you're going off first quarters at over 250%, which is, of course, number one. Four quarters, two to four, we average 35 points, which puts us in the bottom three, number 16 in the AFL, um, and we average about 85% uh, percentage uh, in those in those quarters. And that is something that needs to be rectified quickly. If we are to go deep into September or October or whatever the hell you know this grand final and final series is going to be, we need to rectify that. There's no point being five goals up. Uh, in the first quarter, and then not scoring until the last quarter. It's just ridiculous. Number two. The next thing that we learned is going on a little bit about um, the first point is that teams have a way of counter-attacking us with consecutive goals. So what ends up happening is that we kick a good, decent score in the first quarter. So we have the team on the ropes. We take off our foot from the gas like by 200%. And then the other teams come out and kick as many goals as they want to before we, you know, we kick one goal in the third quarter. So these consecutive goals that we've conceded have happened in games where we've won and games where we've lost. Happened against the Bulldogs in round one. They, um, after we kicked away, they came back and kicked three goals. Uh, Richmond in round two, they kicked four goals, right? <laughs> four goals in a row. And there was only 10 goals kicked for the match, five goals each side. So... You, we let them kick, you know, 80% of their whole entire um, score consecutively, and that's how the draw happens. Same with the Giants game. We get on a bit of a roll. They um, score three goals after half time. Again, with the Essendon game, where we're in control, they came out, scored eight goals in a row. Eight goals in a row. And you think, wow, that's insane. Eight goals in a row. And I wonder why we ended up losing that game. And then... West Coast, I keep saying and then and then and then because that's exactly what it feels like. The Eagles scored four goals before we scored one and then they went on and kicked 13 goals straight. Since Champion Data started taking um, stats from games in 1999, which was, you know, 21, damn I'm old, 21 years ago, we have not conceded 13 goals in a row. So we broke a record. Also, congratulations, Collingwood. We we broke a record on uh, on the game against the Eagles on on Sunday afternoon. So I just don't. It's just hard to fathom that we're a team that starts fast and is a good defensive side, but we let this shit happen. So that's something again needs to be rectified as soon as possible. Number three. In a time where none of our forwards are scoring and we don't have Jordan Dugowie. Stevenson needs to stay up forward. He was getting a lot of the ball against the Eagles off the half-back line. I think about 60% of his possessions were um, in that, not directly off half-back. He wasn't playing as a half-backer, but I guess the defensive the defensive role he had was, you know, in that back line sort of thing, was, you know, 
60% of his possessions in that sort of defensive half. Um, didn't kick a goal. And I feel like we need him more in the forward line now. Look at 2018, what he was like. An unknown commodity. And he just absolutely tore the competition apart. Won the, won the rising star, you know. Then that thing happens in 2019, you know, the 10-game ban. And now we're playing him in a position where we shouldn't be playing him. Um, in my opinion, anyway. And I think a couple of other Collingwood supporters uh, might feel the same way as well. Um, I just feel like... Stevenson is a goal sneak. Yes, okay, he kicks him in the, in the first quarter and then doesn't kick him for any of the other quarters when he's in the forward line. But from points one and two, you can see that we generate most of our scores in the first quarter and then that's it, pretty much. So you can see why the forwards are suffering. Um, and he definitely needs to play in that forward line. Without Scott Penderbury on the ground against the Eagles, and he won't be there for the next two or three games, we lacked leadership. We have great emerging leaders, uh, Grundy, Maynard, Taylor Adams could be a captain in waiting, Adam Trelaw, Darcy Moore, but I feel like they didn't give us what we wanted them to, especially when our heads were getting, you know, lowered because the Eagles just kept kicking goal after goal after goal. We didn't show that fight, and I think that comes from the leadership that Pendles brings, that Sidebottom brings, you know, who will be playing this week. Um, it's just that you know, it's not even that we're a one-man team with Pendles. He just, he's a coach on the field. And we don't have another player at the moment that can do that. Taylor Adams tried, you know, I'm sure Grundy and Moore and stuff, they were trying as well. But I feel like we, that's what we lacked. And we lacked that discipline. And there's only so much the coaches upstairs can do for guys um, down down on the ground to have that motivation. And I think that's what Pendlebury brings to the table. Five. The last thing that we learned, bring back the bear. The bear has to come out of hibernation. He has to play this week. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to drop another rap track. And you don't want to hear me rap because I'm absolutely shit ass at it. So, bear has to come in. And not because, you know, um, he we just want him in because he's a cult figure or, or whatever. He has been ripping it up in the twos. Every single in the mix, in the mix, in the mix. Oh yeah, he's going good. He's doing really well. Tearing it up, tearing it up. I think he will bring that intensity um, and pressure to that game that we were lacking on the weekend against the Eagles. If you follow me on Instagram, Swoop Luke, you'll see that I did a little bit of a... Um, uh, I pulled apart a bit of play in the second quarter where we just had no, no, no pressure whatsoever. And if you read the comments, you can see that I'm not trying to call players out. I'm just calling plays out. But if a player does something wrong, I'm going to call him out. You know, I'm not just going to, not just going to sit back and, and take it. You know, we can't sweep this under the rug. So, you know, after that, Wills wasn't applying pressure. If they think that they can't have Sire and Wills in the same team, after that performance, Wills comes out and Sire goes straight into the team. So bring back, hashtag, bring back the bear. Chuck him out of hibernation. He has to come back in. Anyway, guys, that's just been five lessons that we learned uh, about the Pies with what we put up against the Eagles. Uh, also remember, if you're living in Victoria, get a mask on when you're outside. If you have to be outside, keep us all safe. I want to watch the football. I want to watch the Pies um, at the MCG on, on Grand Final Day this year. And if you haven't got a mask, get one of these babe, bad boys. Put it around like this. Put it around like this. Not as effective, but it's better than nothing. Chuck it up like this. Bang. You got yourself a Collingwood scarf mask. So anyway, guys, until then, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. Double shackers. Soup you all later. Put on a bit of a lead. Put on a bit of a bluffer. Uh, bluffer. Oh, shit. I came up with them as well. I should have written them down. Um, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I should have written these down. <laughs>